Good evening, everyone. How's it going out there? Welcome back here to a Wednesday night, 8.54 p.m. California time here along the West Coast. August 27, 2025 is the date. Latest activity shows some movement here across the area around the Philippines. It looks like a 3.6. Also, some newer activity up here uh, around the Japan region, a 4.8 coming in here to the northwestern side here of the Filipino plate. Got to watch this area up here. The Nankai Trough been... Uh, Holding on for now, but uh, there's quite a bit of strain in that area that's uh, capable of producing a mega quake. We've seen a lot of activity around the region here recently, and uh, here it looks like in the last 24 hours as well. So continue to watch that region. Also, some newer activity way up into Russia as well. That's man, that's way up there. Let's see what we got going on. Actually, it looks like it's around the Mongolia area, 5.3, and uh, it looks like maybe another smaller quake in there as well. Uh, it does look like it's um, around the mountainous areas here. Uh, they do get uh, quite a bit of earthquake activity out here historically. If you look at the uh, historical model here that shows us uh, areas of heightened seismic activity here throughout the years in uh, Mongolia. And of course areas closer to the plate boundary are subject to uh, large earthquakes there uh, in due time. All right, there's an earthquake there across the uh, Japan area, 4.8. Let's go ahead and see what we got for the uh, west coast out here. Starting up into the Pacific Northwest. Got uh, a little bit of activity around Mount St. Helens and also Mount Rainier. Looks like the last earthquake shows a 1.1 here around the uh, northern Washington region. I do want to double check the Cascadia Trimmer and a couple of volcanoes there across the Cascades. Uh, by the way, we got uh, 26 epicenters of tremor. That's across the southern end here of the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, it's not volcanic tremor, but slow slip events there. 26 of them, not that big of a deal. In fact, it uh, looks like it's dwindling down. Uh, Mount Rainier, let's go ahead and check out the seismograph station here real quick. See what we got. Uh, maybe some earthquake activity out here in the last few hours uh, throughout the day. Definitely some earthquake activity out here. Some of these may be ice quakes. I'll give them that, but there's definitely still earthquake activity occurring out there across Mount Rainier. Uh, Mount St. Helens, we'll check that out as well just to see what's going on. Now, these are very small quakes there on the graph. That's why they're probably not getting to them. Uh, but it does look like uh, some earthquake activity stirring up there across Mount St. Helens as well. Notice that graph there showing uh, quite a bit of earthquake activity. Uh, there was one this afternoon there about 1.30 or so. Uh, I don't believe they showed that. They got activity from yesterday, the last one this morning. But as you can see, there was a number of earthquakes out here throughout the day. And uh, what looks like maybe some earthquake activity as well um, showing up across the area. Those are very small earthquakes, but... Just seems a little odd. All these uh, volcanoes there across the Cascades starting to stir up a little bit. Let's check out Man Mount Adams here. Uh, interestingly, uh, there's not a whole lot of seismograph stations around the area of Mount Adams, uh, which kind of uh, should be. We should have some uh, instruments up there monitoring it. Uh, looking at the past 24 hours here, not a whole lot of activity there across Mount uh, Adams. We can check out uh, Three Sisters area down there in Oregon. Uh, remember a few years back we heard about some swelling going on out here around the western side of the Three Sisters area. Um, nothing really ever became of that. Let's see what we got here around the husband that's uh, around the Three Sisters area. That is a defunctionable, defunctioned seismograph station there. Um, I don't see any earthquake activity out there. Maybe a couple small ones. The seismograph readings there are... Uh, fairly decent in terms of the amplitudes you can see you know what's going on there uh, but not a whole lot of earthquake activity it looks pretty quiet across that region uh, Cascadia subduction zone as I noted they're pretty quiet nothing going on there across Northern California for now uh, Bay Area pretty quiet as well uh, in fact uh, I don't know if we've had anything above 2.5 today well it looks like a 2.8 up here that is north of Santa Rosa around the Clear Lake volcanic field these are hydrothermal plants up here. Um, and it does look like, uh, let's see here, it's at the southern end, very close to these geothermal plants. Maybe some newer ones out here as well since this image, uh, I don't know how old it is, but they're always building new geothermal plants out here to poke holes in a volcano. All right, past that, 
Uh, San Andreas Fault holding on steady for now. A couple earthquakes out here in the last hour, including this one up around the Garlock Fault shear zone, a little 1.5. Got uh, a little cluster here around the uh, San Bernardino Mountains up here. Looks like a couple one stirring up this morning and this afternoon. Nothing big. Pretty shallow earthquake activity. This area is highly strained out here, the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. Uh, really nothing major going on across Southern California for now, but tell you what, the possibilities are there. Yellowstone National Park, one earthquake up here uh, from last night, little 2.3, couple other earthquakes there throughout the morning around the Hebgen Lake area. Uh, let's go see the Yellowstone seismograph stations here, see what we have going on. I'm gonna check out this graph here. Looks pretty quiet, not a whole lot happening. Uh, this earthquake this afternoon, that was about 1 o'clock or so. What was stirring up around 1 o'clock? 1 o'clock this afternoon. Um, I really don't see anything here around that region. <clears throat> or the world, for that matter. Sometimes we can see uh, you know, large events show up there. There was a query blast way up in Montana, but that wouldn't show up. But I'm looking at this reading right here and right here. Almost looks like what you would see in, in terms of magma movement. But uh, unconfirmed, I don't know if that is indeed magma movement. We would have to go into a little bit more detail of it. But uh, interesting little reading on that graph. Not showing up on this station here. So maybe whatever was going on is local to the activity. Some type of environmental noise or or something human caused possibly but there's not a whole lot of earthquake activity happening there across the mount uh, or the uh, Yellowstone National Park area for now uh, oil field still getting hit uh, as far as the areas around the New Madrid seismic zone got one earthquake here this morning a little 1.9 nothing new to report here throughout the afternoon older quake activity from this morning around Tennessee and the South Carolina area uh, taking a look here at the earthquake 3d globe nothing going on surprisingly across new zealand what is going on out here this is just unusually quiet the last couple quakes were up here along the tonga trench but everything has gone silent across new zealand all across this area fiji islands vanuatu solomon islands wow watch that area closely there it normally doesn't stay quiet for long uh, typical movement out here across the crunch zone. Nothing new to report out here across the Indonesia area. That's just always happening. Uh, some activity south here and to the uh, close to the South Africa area, it looks like. A little 4.2. Mediterranean regions here, pretty uh, mellow. I mean, some older activity, some aftershock activity there in western Turkey, but for the most part, that's dying down. Nothing major going on there across the Atlantic. South America, uh, Middle America Trench here looks active, but uh, some low grade four magnitude earthquakes occurring there. South America, just a handful of threes and twos across that subduction zone for now. 3.5 out there across the Hawaii area. So let's go see what's going on here. Uh, that 3.5, 19 miles deep underneath the area of Pahala. That's part of an ongoing earthquake swarm that's been uh, off and on here at the deeper levels. It's got something to do with the plumbing system down there around the hot spot area. Uh, that's been an ongoing swarm and kind of studied there since the, uh, I think it's the 60s or 70s. Uh, 1960, 1970 range is, um, they've been monitoring that activity. So deeper activity there comes and goes. Uh, I do think that plays a part here on altering the, uh, the flow of the magma across the area. So we will have to watch that. Uh, a little bit of earthquake activity here. Newer quake activity across the summit area and the crater area of Kilauea Volcano. Something that we haven't seen out here um, lately. So let's go check out here. And this is following the eruption. Uh, episode number 31 here came to a halt just a couple days ago. Uh, I do think we may see some altering here of our future eruptions. I don't know if it's going to take place here with episode number 32 coming up or uh, down the road here, but we do have to watch that because we can get some uh, blockage going on there across the uh, craters area of the summit and see a uh, diversion of magma take place somewhere else. 
uh, migration that is right now we're still going up there in terms of inflation but there was a little odd deflationary event going on um, that we haven't seen in any of the other episodes of eruptions uh, leading up to an eruption that is so a little odd activity but we'll continue to watch that things are always changing I mean episode 32 is coming up this has been an ongoing rinse and repeat cycle there since the end of last year December um, but uh, it may not uh, continue for long we'll have to watch that flaring activity not a whole lot right now but we're still getting bombarded with protons look at this pretty decent proton event kicking up here on the polar regions the northern area and it looks like maybe across the southern area as well as uh, far as any flaring activity goes some sea flare activity across the board our last M flare looks like it was a number of days ago um, we do have quite a few active areas out here across the eastern section of the Sun let's take a look see what we have here um, quite a bit of complexity here back along this region uh, I do think that is the primary area that we need to watch for some strong flares uh, this area back here it's got some coverage but it does look like it's starting to decay and degrade a little bit uh, but if I had to pick uh, an area out of all of these we do need to watch this region down here also a newer area know some independent magnetic structure here within that core this area just popped up out of the blue here in the last couple days not massive but it uh, is looking fairly complex and growing quite rapidly uh, so uh, we do have a decent flare threat uh, lined up for now we'll see if it uh, stirs up or not but 60 percent chance for M flare X flare around 10 percent chance or so uh, and of course those sunspots um, just about directly facing earth here 4197 is a super complex one uh, that has a beta gamma structure could be beta gamma delta structure here soon it is growing <clears throat> so watch that here for some stronger flaring no major roars there in the forecast for now uh, far as anything um, tropic related I've got some activity out there in the eastern Pacific well south of Southern California there might get some moisture from that tropical system in the next couple days but I don't see anything stirring up out here across the Gulf of uh, the Gulf down here or the Atlantic that uh, is unusually quiet the patterns out here are a little odd right now but that's good because it's keeping all any uh, keeping any and all hurricane activity away from this region for now because we're getting into the the brunt and the peak of the hurricane season uh, seismograph stations out here look pretty quiet looks like Mount Rainier went offline um, so for now I guess we'll keep it like that all the seismograph stations there lined up with their names accordingly uh, have yourself a wonderful evening folks and uh, keep an eye here on Japan like I said it's got a lot of activity happening around it I'm more concerned with this region right here the Nankai trough that is a major subduction zone and I've been chatting about it for a little bit there's good reason why uh, it's, it's I think it's coming up here for some big earthquake activity just the question is when notice aftershock sequences here in Russia have calmed down a lot but uh, don't let it fool you we can still see a a decent event up here all right have a good one we'll see you guys out here in the morning for the Thursday morning update take care